This is the DallasCowboys.com Draft Show. Your war room for insider news and draft analysis from deep within the confines of Cowboys headquarters at the Star in Frisco. The Dallas Cowboys are like Michael Parsons. And now, your hosts, Brian Broaddus, Kyle Yeomans, and David Hellman. It is Tuesday, April 19th. That means it is time for, once again, another episode of the Draft Show. Wow, the big voice guy already. They already made the big voice change, in case you haven't heard. Skeleton crew here today. I'm Dave Hellman. I'm joined only by Brian Broaddus. Kyle uh, will be back Thursday, I believe. Jeff Cavanaugh will not be finishing out the draft cycle with us. He is pursuing other job opportunities? Yeah. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. There's sometimes where, you know, that things uh, that in this business, things don't always match up. And if you go somewhere and, and are part of an, another team's program, then you can't be with, uh, you know, with maybe a team that you were currently working with. So it happens. Yeah. You know, it happens. It's, it's not, I mean, uh, I just want to say one thing. I've really, eight years I worked with Jeff. You know, on doing stuff with, uh, you know, bringing him up, whether it was at him and Kevin Turner at Valley Ranch, uh, whether it was at the Star. You know, those guys did a hell of a job of learning about the draft. And a lot of nights kicked my ass about making me think about these players in a different way. And I appreciate that. I do. I, you know, the one thing that I've learned, Dave, and you've been with me a long time here, too, the draft show is the same. The same, you know, the, 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 the intensity that we do this is always going to be the same. It's just the cast of characters kind of change along the way. And, and that's kind of like the draft. The draft's on a big stage, and the cast of characters kind of change every year. So love those guys. Love what everybody, the, the contributions to the Ed Cahills and the Bucky Brooks and, the, and, you know, everybody who's ever worked on this show. Jeff, and KT, you know, it, it just... It's, the, it's about the show. It's about the program. It's about the investigation and the education. And that's, that's something that's always going to be consistent about us, I think, here. That's very, very well said. Uh, I just want to throw in, yeah, I mean, when somebody leaves the show, especially two weeks before the draft, I yeah. think it, it prompts speculation. Yeah. I'm not going to get into Jeff's professional business. He's pretty open about it. I'm sure he will have something to say about it soon. Sure. Uh, this is a lot more about non-competes and some of the realities of yeah. corporate America then yeah. I know when when something like this happens Brian when you when you left dallascowboys.com yeah. people were convinced that that you pissed off the wrong member of the Jones family no. the truth is usually a lot more boring than that yeah, I promise no. you there's there's no bad blood here with no, Jeff not and that's, being on you know the show. I, I think that if I pissed off the Joneses that Derek Eagleton and Nick Eatman and the Jones family would have not asked me back to do the draft show exactly so you know I mean we all take opportunities we all go on and do things that we think are better for us career-wise and whatever I mean it's you know you can't you can't sit there and say oh well I blame this guy and boy they're screwing this guy and that and the other there are certain protocols we follow, you know, and there's certain things. I mean, I think everybody was really willing and able to carry this thing through. And we still are. The commitment oh, is there. We're not going anywhere. Yeah. And, you know, what's the, the, it's something that we haven't had in the past is DallasCowboys.com and, you know, 105.3 The Fan have not worked the first night together in a while. And now we are, you know. So that, that to me is very, very exciting with Sean Sharif, yourself, Bobby Belt, Kyle, you know what I mean? There's still plenty of talk about those three days with the draft and, and try and put this thing in, into perspective like we've done for 10 plus years. Yep, which I, I don't want to, you know, you don't want to oversell and under deliver. So we're going to try to keep some of those tricks up our sleeve. Oh, but we got it. Don't worry about that. Our draft coverage will be just as robust as always. We appreciate y'all sticking with us. Um, but yeah, no, no bad blood with Jeffrey. We will. Uh, yeah, we will be seeing and talking to him. Uh, before too long, if I had to guess. So, with that out of the way, there was another <laughs> huge development that happened over the weekend. Um, I, I'm I'm not laughing because it is a very serious matter. Uh, it's just a, a lot can happen from Thursday to Tuesday, I guess, is the lesson you always learn in this industry. Um, Kelvin Joseph. Yeah. I literally, I wrote on Twitter, like on Thursday morning, that something crazy would have to happen for the Cowboys to need to reassess their cornerback situation. You willed it, in the huh? Draft. 
I mean, I think I'm catching a lot of flack for that. I'm I'm not a superstitious guy, but yeah. the timing was eerie. I'm I'm sure anybody listening to this has heard um, Kelvin Joseph was a, a person of interest in a yeah. murder investigation. Mm-hmm. He spoke to the Dallas Police Department over the weekend about a shooting that happened last month uh, in the lower Greenville neighborhood of Dallas. Some arrests were made. Your hometown area, yeah, right? Dude, it literally <laughs> happened like a mile from my house. It's kind of eerie. Yeah. Um, so some arrests were made following yeah. that conversation. And now we are just kind of sitting here. Uh, he has not been arrested. He has not been charged with a crime. Probably practicing He's, behind us as we speak. at the off-season program, as far as I am aware. Um, I don't know. I mean, we can. There, there's a few conversations to be had here. What do you make of it, and, yeah. and where do we go from here in regard to the draft, since this is the draft show? Yeah, a couple of things you need to think about here is that – were the red flags. And we talked about Kelvin last year at this time. We were talking about you and I uh, were blessed to go to the great university of, at LSU. And, and, you know, we know people there that are able to, to kind of fill us in on maybe some of the holes we might have in, in, in the coverage. And, you know, there were people that were there that were very adamant about, listen, this guy is a good kid, but you know, he's not always in trouble, but trouble is always within arm's length. And that's something I think we talked about. No, if you're if you're a team that was interested in Kelvin Joseph, you do your due diligence. You know, but remember what they did with Lyle Collins, Larry Wansley, the director of securities in Baton Rouge, boots on ground, they like to say, and you know, trying to figure out what's going on with there. Same thing with Kelvin Joseph. You know, whether it's you know whether it's the the, the legal team here, the you know the, the security team. They're, they're doing their due diligence to kind of figure everything out. And they were obviously comfortable with the situation with Kelvin Joseph. So now you have to go back and you have to look at your situation and say, okay, did we, was it the process right? You know, were, was the information, were the sources, were the people that were asking the question, what were the reports, you know, did we rely on a coach too much? You know, Mike McCarthy, Will McClay, and, and, and Dan Quinn were all in Lexington, Kentucky for the workout. So they know they had a chance. Visit with the kids. You know, talk to them. Let them, you know, hey, put a name with a face. I'm Dan Quinn. I'm going to be your defensive coordinator if we draft you. So there was a lot of legwork that was done here. And, you know, the Cowboys made the determination that he was second-round worthy. With a very small sample size of games, if you think about what he did in Baton Rouge, he only played eighteen college games. That's I think, what I'm saying, something like that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you're in a situation right now where, you know, that's a very, very, that's a very, very small evaluation right now. So you had to be obviously comfortable with the player to make the pick. Now, does that keep them from looking at a corner now? Let's remember last year at this time what was going on. And really, we didn't know the magic of Dan Quinn and what he can do with defense. Sure. They were looking at a cornerback at, at, the, at their first-round pick, and it just, both of them went right ahead of them. And then it was, okay, now we have to reset where the stack is, look at the stack and say, okay, Micah Parsons, can we get Micah Parsons here on a little bit of a drop back and then, and then, and then get a pick? They made that determination. So last year at this time, they were looking dead in the eyes at some cornerbacks. And we were talking about it a bunch. So are they totally are, – are things – have things changed over the over the last year with the cornerback Which, situation? That's what I'm curious about. And, I mean, look, it, this, is, this is a strange situation because usually – Usually something more has happened, you know, yeah. like as it's it's Tuesday morning, I am not under any I have no reason to believe that he's going to be released in the immediate future. The fact that he's out there even practicing, right. I think, tells you a lot. Right. Um, obviously, the league's the NFL's disciplinary p- protocol is impossible to predict. Right. They can do whatever they want, whenever they want. But. I think you I kind of go forward with the idea that maybe he's going to be here for at least the time being sure. until the league gets involved. That's yeah. that is the the idea that I have as of right now. Well, anyway. then, and you're also in a situation, too, where this time next year you're looking at not likely not having Brown or Lewis here. So do you want and then and then and also the situation with Joseph, you know, the fact that they didn't ask him to take a leave of absence 
you know, to maybe, I mean, immediately he was talking with Dallas Police Department, and the next day he's in far, he's part of a workout program. Yep. Now, the Cowboys are really, really, really busy with their draft process right now with building the boards and stuff like that. So did somebody along the way, or is it one of these things that, like, time will heal this? You know, I kind of want to believe the fact that he's practicing right now. They believe that they're just going to keep their heads down and build their boards and, and let Kelvin Joseph practice with the teams and figure out you know what they want to do later on when it comes to drafting a, a corner. Which, it's a tragic situation. I don't want to make light of that. No. But that, but that is immediately where people's minds go is the cornerback depth chart Trayvon yeah. Trayvon Diggs named all pro I mean he, I yeah. think it's fair to say he's the centerpiece of your group right Anthony Brown has one year remaining on his deal right Jordan and you're 100 percent right they could absolutely move on from Jordan next year but he does have two years remaining on his contract sure you mean, so he could be here in yeah, no that, that's you know, that's what 2023 I'm yeah, if that, they want that, that's you know and that's me misspoking on that misspeaking on that for for his sake because to me, like I say, they were committed to drafting corner last year. High. I mean, so has that changed? That's where I think you have to look. Jordan and Anthony Brown played a hell of a lot better than a lot of people that's, expected them to. That's what I'm saying. And that's, and that's the magic of Dan Quinn right now. That's the magic of, of Curse and Lewis and Brown and, you know, and him playing Micah Parsons as a rush end. You know, that's the magic that when you have a coach, see, when we're going to go through this draft, and we've talked about this a bunch, whether it's a wide receiver, you know, gets picked here. Everybody's like, well, yeah, they need a wide receiver. But are you are you thinking like, well, Kellen Moore, Mike McCarthy, Doug Nussmeyer, they're going to figure things out and get these guys involved. We're still kind of waiting. CeeDee Lamb has been a good player for you. But maybe my expectations for CD Lamb was too much. I and- see you. I see you trying to veer off the road, and I'm not going to let you do it because I want to ask you this. I want to know specifically. Let's just – Kelvin Joseph is over here in yeah. this weird, ambiguous zone. He's here, but we'll just assume you can't 100% count on that. You have Diggs. You have the other two starters, at least for another year or so. And then you have Nashawn Wright, who is just a big old question mark. Yeah. He was mainly a special teams player. You don't know what you have in him as far as cornerback goes. So with those four – Guys, McDuffie, Gordon, Booth. If you're asking me, I'm at okay. That uh, Trent McDuffie. I, you're not going to have it unless you Kyler move up, Gordon, yeah, and unless, Andrew Booth. Yeah, unless you move up. I mean, now if you get to six, That's, this is this is the discussion you need to have with yourself. Well, real okay, real quick before we do, I just want to know. No, those four guys are here, and you don't know about Kelvin. What what is your opinion of the cornerback situation? How dire of a s show is it for you well, right now? Like I said, that's last year at this time we were screaming for right. former NFL players' sons to play. But that, it doesn't feel that drastic to me right now. No, it doesn't. Or am I crazy? No, it doesn't. And that's what I'm saying. That's the magic of Dan Quinn. I gave you the names. If you want to get to six, if all of a sudden Carolina is not going to hold you up on a huge price to go. Let me tell you what, Giants at five, if they flip-flop and take a tackle before they take a Sauce Gardner, you could very well be looking at the best corner in the draft, maybe one of the best players in the draft, at number six. Now, Cowboy fans are freaking out right now, because, but you would give yourself two options, potentially one of the tackles, Cross or Neal, and then you give yourself potentially the chance of drafting Gardner if you want. Now, if you trade in the middle of the draft, maybe you have a chance to draft Stingley. But that's what I'm saying. I don't think you get killed. I mean, Gardner comes into play with me if you go to six. That's where that's where he comes into play for me. Okay. But if the but if the but if the Giants who we've all done shows with the Giants.com, we've done these shows. Corner and tackle. Corner tackle. Corner tackle. What combination? Tackle first, corner second. You know, that's that's the thought you have to – because they're thinking that Carolina ain't taking a corner. Okay, but do you think that corner is a big enough need that – and you're surely I giving up next year's it. one. I would consider it. I would consider it if I got to six. Okay. Because, again, so, I mean, uh, cross cr- – my view, cross Neal or then, or then Gardner. You're giving up – you're giving up – 
24, next year's one, and probably something else I to get know. that I mean, far. It, it, the, Maybe. The, you know, Peter King and Monday Morning Quarterback yesterday on his on his on the, the the stuff he does, you know, for NBC is talking about the price of going up is not as steep. Bobby Belt, who's an insider with us on 105.3 The Fan, last week was talking to teams and saying, hey, the price of going up is not that drastic. There's so many teams with multiple picks in the first round. Six they're, of them. They're willing to move the second one. They want to They want to take advantage of the second one. So maybe the price of going up. I'm not asking to move a jump to six. You get Carolina that's desperate. Carolina's given up a lot of uh, second-day picks to get quarterbacks that haven't played. So two ones for Sauce Gardner. Just that's all they want is next year's one. Well, what if you could give them? What if you give them fifty-six in one of those fives? You think that's enough? That's what I'm I, saying. I, I know that. That's I know what, what you just said, but that's that doesn't saying. seem like enough. Uh, that's what I'm saying, though. Teams are willing to maybe part ways with that second pick. It's it's. You're right. In in, in when, to wrap your your hands around it and say, "Wow, you're going to get worked on that if you go up there." It might be that teams are like, no, we're going to make a pick and we're willing to listen to you on something else. I, I want to believe that because we've seen a little bit of the pattern for some of these. Well, Amari uh, Cooper, you know, people aren't willing to pay. Now, they paid for – They paid for somebody. Well, they paid – well They Hill, paid for Adams and Hill. Okay, yeah, but those... again, two of, the best, two of the best receivers in the in the draft. Now, people are looking at that as a situation where they're like – well, you know, we're going to have to go get the best, but in a draft where there's so much chaos as far as who the best players are, you might be willing to jump back and go back in the second or third or fourth round and grab guys instead of making a pick at six or seven or one of those spots. All right. Which nothing makes you happier than trying to give away picks for a player. It's your favorite thought. You know what? I, I'm, I'm trying to, at least in the first round, I am trying to eliminate any issues. Dallas has proven in the first round they have a handle on this. It's round two that all of a sudden things go a little. Just ship off the two and get Sauce Gardner, and Think you don't about, even have to worry about messing me, that pick is, up. Is Demarcus Lawrence the best two that they've had here in recent history? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they've tried to, They've I mean, tried it with a guard. They've tried it with a linebacker. Uh, De- I mean, Demarcus Lawrence is the only great second rounder that they've drafted in the last decade. All, like, yeah. They've had a few decent – picks but yeah I mean they had a second round grade on McGovern if you if you look I mean that that mean but they picked him in the third I want you to okay but I want you to put on your Dallas Cowboys hat Mm -hmm. I want you to think like them and not like you (laughs) yeah no you heard me do you think that it do you think that the Kelvin Joseph news will change their approach no with that position no I don't either no why because I think Kelvin Joseph is going to be here a I kind of lean that way too and B, again, for all the reasons I just listed out, I just I think you can survive this season without spending a big pick at that position. Unless unless they do what they did when we were doing the draft show way back in the day with with Mo Claiborne. Unless they've got something in mind that they're going to try and jump this thing all the way to six, you know, and then and go get the who they think the best player. Sauce Gardner might be the best player on their board. What if I told you? They, you know, what if I told you? Or Cross could look like Tyron Tyron Smith to them, a young Tyron Smith. <sighs> yeah, that's more appealing to me, honestly. I mean, and I no, think and, the and world fans of and fans and fans would think that fans would fans would be totally happy if they went in and draft because fans now are conditioned that you're going to only have Tyron Smith for 13 games a year. They're conditioned that, and they're and they and maybe there's the thought of moving on from Tyron Smith after next year. You plug Cross in at right tackle, you know, then then you know uh, the golden child steel becomes the swing tackle. You know, you kind of take care of that, and then when Tyron gets hurt, you move Cross to left tackle, you put Steele at right tackle, and you go play. And that might be your team in 2023. What if I tell you that six is too rich, but and again, if the trade market's not as robust as what we're used to, yeah. Your third round pick can get get you up to like sixteen, where you have a shot at Derek Stingley. Well, there you go. Does that do anything for you? Yeah, I like Stingley. I do. He's my sixth best player of my top one hundred and fifty that I've got so far. And it's not an LSU bias. This guy, legitimately, if 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 he was more of an alpha, I think more people. There were questions about him as a player. Did he really love football? You know, when he plays, he's just as good as Sauce Gardner out there playing. 
Sauce Gardner is just an app, an alpha male that that doesn't you know doesn't need somebody to hold his hand along the way at times. There's a couple alphas in the secondary room here. I think sure. I think we can handle. I mean, that. That's what I'm saying. When you get when you you know the thing about why I would be not afraid to draft Stingley is because I know that Diggs would I know Diggs would take care of him. Mm, great, wonderful, wonderful point. Before we go to break, I do want to mention that um, somebody just pointed out to us Trayvon Diggs was a second round pick as well. So. Yeah, that there is, you go. There you go. That was yeah. That's relatively recent. You're right, but because I keep thinking of him being a first because they were talking about him at 17. Yeah, yeah. No, pick 51, I believe. Yeah, uh, 60 actually. I think is what it was. Was it 60? I think he was picked. These 51. drafts all kind of run together. Dude, for me. But the, no, the last two, especially the COVID drafts, just kind of blend together for yeah, me. They yeah. they don't stand out. He was pick 51. I might have forgotten he was a second round pick, but I can still remember the number. Yeah, I got that 51 for me. 51. There you go. I don't think it's going to change uh, the overall narrative all that much. And to your point, last time we heard, Kelvin is out there working out. So yeah. we'll keep an eye on that. In the meantime, we're going to take a quick break. we got plenty of questions from y'all coming up in the second segment. Stick with us. This is Chad Hennings, former cowboy and proud veteran of the United States Air Force. When my fellow military veterans choose VA, they receive life-changing benefits from the Department of Veterans Affairs. If you are a veteran, you may be eligible for health care, education, and training benefits, a home loan guarantee, housing assistance, and more. Choose VA for the benefits you've earned. Visit choose.va.gov to learn more. That's choose.va.gov. What do you call a group of grown men and women with their faces painted silver and blue who get together every week to share a three-hour-long ritual of jumping, sinking, and toasting Miller Lite in 10-gallon hats while yelling, how about them cowboys? You call it Miller Time in Dallas. Here's to the cowboys. Here's to the original light beer. It's Miller Time. Celebrate responsibly. This is the DallasCowboys.com Draft Show. Welcome back to the Draft Show presented by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. Tax season is officially over, Brian, with the reads different now. But Liberty Tax has services to offer all year round. To learn more about all those great services, visit LibertyTax.com slash radio. I hope you paid your taxes. If, if or but if if you need them, they they I'm sure they can do plenty of other cool stuff. You might be late paying your taxes too. You might have hey. needed an extension. You got to be real late before they start telling you you're going to jail, though. Yeah. Like take it. I know from experience, unfortunately. <laughs> so that's so funny that, and I'm so glad the listener brought that up because you think about. I was just thinking about Diggs, and you're right. The COVID drafts and stuff it like that. It all blends together. It blends together, and you're thinking, like, man, that guy was a second round pick because I remember. Oh, we talked about him as, a, a, as an option at 17. 17. That's why, okay, 17, 15. Okay. And the iron, and I'm not calling anybody out because I felt the same way. Yeah. Universally, the way everybody felt about Trayvon was like, like him, not at 17. Don't yeah. do it at 17. Yeah. But. If you knew two years ago that he'd be an all-pro. That's amazing how you just forget things that happen. Because I'm just thinking of, like, like but, but, I, I remember. But there's more. They've had more problems at two than they, I mean. Oh, for sure. That's been. That's no, been two, a, so Will took over in 14. Yeah. Demarcus Lawrence. Randy, who yeah. was good, but yeah. barely played relative to how long should he was on be, the team. Still, should still be here if his agent doesn't pull the rug, I, I mean, believe. That's fair, but even still, like yeah. I think by his seventh year in the league, I think he played like yeah. 50 games or something like that. Yeah. Uh, then you got Jalen. Yeah. Uh, Cheeto was, was a solid pick, not a home mm-hmm. run. Uh, I would say the same thing about Connor Williams. And then Tristan Hill. Yeah. Not anything to get super excited about, and mm-hmm. then you find, and then you get Trayvon, and we'll see what happens. Maybe it's with a little Calvin bit better. Joseph. Yeah, there you go. Eh, hit and miss. Uh, anyway, you know what time it is. It's the second segment. That's when we answer y'all's questions, otherwise known as Twitter, Twitter on the twenty. Since we were doing this in the first segment, I'll just keep it going with a question from Brian. Brian with an I, not a Y. He wants to know about trading up to the Jets, the yeah, tenth overall pick, and Ten. going back to your point. Maybe the trade market's a little less robust. Do you yeah. think you would have to do a one a next year's one to do that? 
And also, who would you do it for? See, we have Stephen Jones on today on 105.3 The Fan. Matter of fact, he's being interviewed, I think, at 11 o'clock here. So I don't oh, know. Just in time for us to get off the air. Yeah. So and, and I asked uh, asked one of the questions. I said, asked one of the guys if they would ask him the question about, has he starting to hear what Bobby Belt, Peter King, and others are about tr- about trading up? Is the price to go up, or is it just? Are there a bunch of those teams that are starting to call and say, "Hey, listen, we'll be willing to back out." Maybe you haven't talked parameters, but I, I, I just just keep an eye. I, I don't, you know, it, if Stephen would tell me in this interview today that, "Hey, yeah, the, this this price of going up might not be as steep as everybody thinks," and I kind of feel like that Bobby and both Peter. Or talking to enough people around the league that they're getting, you know, I've got my what I call my gang of seven that I haven't been able to visit with yet about, about that. So, you know, maybe on Thursday we'll have a little bit better understanding. But if, if the Jets, you know, okay, if you're going for 10, what are we going to do there? What, what's our plan? Is our plan Stingley? Is our plan Cross? Is our plan the linebacker? If Lloyd. You, I mean, that's, that's kind of where, you know, I'm kind of thinking. If eh. Sauce Gardner hangs around, sure. I'm, I'm interested. Yeah. But I, if I'm doing that, I really I'm, I want to do it for a tackle. And you got it. There I'll you actually go. I'll I'll fold this in just real quick because uh, Bernie Bernie wants to know why we don't talk more about Iki Aquanu, and I think yeah. the and and he's talking about in a trade. I think the answer is just because I expect him to be a top five pick. Yeah, I kind of feel like on a lot of people's boards, he might be the number one guy. I know when I know doing talk with the, again the giant stuff. They were looking the the real right tackle to me is is the kid from Alabama. That that's Neil. Neil. That's the one that's the the real guy. Equanu I think could play left or right. I think Cross is probably a better left than a right. But I mean I love him for the possibility of having him. I think you could train him both. But I to me Equanu is like there's there's going to be a lot of teams that when this is all said and done. He is going to be their their top tackle on the board, and that's probably why you don't talk to him because there's so many teams really ahead of you that could use those offensive tackles. I think the Jags are overthinking it. If they oh, I, like, I, I I I don't. Aiden Hutchinson and Trevon Walker are both great players. Yeah. Kayvon Thibodeau as well, but yeah. I think I think there's so much uncertainty with those guys, and I'm not confident. Any like I I don't see I don't I don't get the impression or at least I'm not confident that those guys are going to be Miles Garrett. See that's the thing. And about when you it, think yeah, about that, like yeah. give me Icky Aquanu. Yeah, I know that they I know they signed Cam Robinson to the franchise tag. I don't yeah. care. Yeah, protect Trevor Lawrence. See that's to me when you're when you know when you're Trent Baalke, who the general manager in Jacksonville, you're now making moves with like one foot in the parking lot. You know, you're you're not going to get another. You know, you're you're as a Brian Broaddus favorite idiom. You know right what? There. I, I'm a fan of Hutchinson. I really am. I am. I, 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 I think I, he's I, a good player. I think he's a good player too. I really do. And you know what? And he's probably the one guy at the first overall pick you want the least amount of holes in. You know, you don't want a guy that has a bunch of holes in him that you're like, ah, oh, well, I can't. Which, that is the the line on Hutchinson is that he's got a really high floor, right? Yeah. But what do you think his ceiling is? Like, do you see him as a perennial all-pro? See, throw? I mean, I was watching guys, like, it's funny because when I watch guys like Sailor and, the, you know, the Georgia tackle and stuff, and I'm trying to get a gauge, I'm watching these guys play him, and like guys are having some success. And I'm talking about a third-round tackle to move to guard. Maybe I should have Sailor in the second round. If you're, if you're blocking Hutchinson and guys like that, Walker getting blocked some. I mean, maybe I, I'm with you. To me, taking the offensive tackle there makes the most sense because I kind of feel like that when you draft a tackle, they play 10, 12, 13 years. I just think about the Cowboys. That's a cornerstone player. They put a sticker on your locker plate every time you go to a Pro Bowl. Yeah. Tyron Smith's is just covered in them. Like yeah. you can't even see the wood anymore. Yeah. And I just feel more confident. That Iquanu is going to have like ten Pro Bowl stickers sure. than than those than those sure. edge rushers. Sure. Uh, going back to the Jets thing, also, I think it's worth noting when you talk about these teams, the Jets have a ton of big picks. Yeah, they pick twice in the top ten. They also pick twice in the thirties. They got they got Seattle's pick too. That's what's well, helping they, them right. Seattle's there. pick is at ten. 
Uh, and they 35 is the other they one. They pick at 35 and 38. 38, yeah. And again at 69. There you go. Which is really nice for them. Yeah. So I just wonder if they care about adding ammunition. No, they care about, again, there's another general manager that's got one foot in the parking lot. You know, he's hiring coaches. He's 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 the Jets. Some, yeah, didn't uh, and well, Joe no, Douglas didn't Joe, he just he's like done a decent job so far, uh, hasn't he? Well, the the thing about it is, I guess so, it depends on what. Yeah, Zach Wilson Woody Johnson. Becomes. Woody Johnson, the owner, was over in Europe being an ambassador, right? For yeah. like for a little time, and now he's back in the building. I think Joe Douglas is kind of. I think the jury's really kind of out on him right now. Just, I mean, there's you know, if this if this if the Wilson pick doesn't work at quarterback, sure. You know, if you, all of a sudden he starts where he didn't like he could play next year, you know, all of a sudden that now you're like, well, that, that dude in Arizona is the only person in the world who can overcome m- messing up a top 10 quarterback pick and keeping oh, sure. his job. Sure. I and mean, that's the quickest way. Well, to the guy in it. Chicago got fired. He got to do it twice. He, he did. Uh, Chev has one. With, speaking of the Jags. I, I mean, a lot of people. I'm sorry I didn't answer the Jets question because I don't know what the price of poker is. Well, I thought I, I thought you gave some scenarios. I, I think, think I think I'd it. like to know. I'd like to know Stephen Jones though. I'd like to know if he thinks because people that I trust and respect are talking about the price of poker is not that much. If that's the case, you know, and you want to make a run at the Jets, go for it. But if you it, but if it turns into where we think it normally is to go up to get into that spot. Then I, I don't think I'm necessarily interested in doing that. Chev had one about a lot of people have asked about our old friend Caleb on Chasen. Yeah. Not off to a robust start. I talked to people in Jacksonville. If you were to if you were willing to part par, if they were they're willing to listen. I was told think you could get him for one of those fifths? I, I think not expensive. I, I don't think that's I don't think that's been asked on the Cowboys, but I specifically asked two people in the Jacksonville organization about him. And both of them said we will listen to any offers that teams make. Well, let's all right. He's played in thirty-one of thirty-two possible games. He's made eleven starts, fifty career tackles, six tackles for loss, two sacks. Yeah. My problem is, I mean, you go back to that year. We we caught a lot of flack about Caleb Vaughn because he went to LSU. Right. We in, usually do with these players. In reality, we were just hunting the Cowboys' needs. And right. if you go back. We had plenty of concerns, and again, I haven't watched him play a whole lot, but it, just looking at his stat line, it looks like he's living up to those concerns, yeah. which yeah. is, yeah. is he kind of a one-trick pony? Can he yeah. stay on the field for three downs? Is right. he big enough in run support? The Cowboys' stack did them a favor. The fact that they, they stacked their board in the way, and then with CD appearing the way he was, I think that worked out fine. With Fowler and Basham and Armstrong and... Obviously, Micah. Like, would you even, would you even want him? I mean, that sounds mean, but yeah. Well, I mean, I think that maybe to me, I would want him because I trust Dan Quinn. That's a wonderful point. Yeah, you know, that's why I have hope I'm for not, Fowler. Because I'm not used to thinking this, about the coaching staff as this, like an asset that can this, make the this most time, of things. This time last year, we were not given Curse a chance in hell, and now it's like, well, you wouldn't draft a safety, would you? We got Curse, we got Hooker. Come on, we ain't drafting a safety. Where this time last year we're like, my God, they need a safety. Got to draft a safety. It's true. You know? But that, I mean, my hope is that Fowler, my hope that Fowler is he, he finds something again with Dan Quinn. I'm not married to Fowler, sure. but I'm hopeful that one year deal. I, I give I give Dan Quinn all the credit for for making players better than they are. Dan Quinn deserves the benefit of the doubt. He does. And Dante Fowler was a top five pick. Like I'm absolutely yeah. optimistic. Now that he, he might have been wrong about this corner. Because he had his, his had his fingerprints on that one too. Yeah, we'll see what happens there. Uh, I know we've answered this question already, but it's an interesting one, and people keep bringing it up. We are a show of the people. Steve, hmm. Steve wants a CD scenario. Steve wants to know the guy that you would laugh at the mock draft that sent you to sent him to Dallas. But if he was there, you have to draft him. Well, that's a really good question because. I think it would be the draft where you got – I think the mock draft where you got Stingley would be the one that kind of makes me – He just he just keeps coming up as he's the best player that seems to have the most reason why yeah. he would fall, you yeah. know? I think I think I would I would laugh at you if – I think said I think that uh, – I think Wilson from Ohio State, the wide Garrett receiver. Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson would be another one that I would kind of laugh at you that maybe that scenario – 
Um, it's so funny because when we first started this journey, Walker from Georgia was a guy that we were just, you know, I mean, it was just every every mock draft I ever saw was Walker, 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 Walker. Now you don't even see that anymore. If somebody puts Walker there, you kind of like, yeah, okay. I mean, it, when we first were doing this, yeah, absolutely. You know, and then there's the you know there's the highlights right there with uh, with Walker as you see, really good football player. I have two thoughts, and these the the first one. He ain't falling to 24. That is, it's simply impossible. But going back to our previous conversation, Mm -hmm. how far? How about Hamilton? Were you going to mention him? I actually wasn't. How far would Kayvon Thibodeau have to fall before you started to get interested? I'll tell you what. I mean, because it's, it's pure. It purely seems to be you, a non-football thing that is pushing him you, down. The you, board. you, you brought something up. If I went, to, if I got to six, I would put him in the mix. I mean, if he gets, I it, wouldn't hate it. I would put him, Gardner, and Cross all in the mix at six. I wouldn't hate it. Yeah, and my he's my number one player on my board of my of the guys I've done. He's the number one guy. See, I I kind of I I take it back a little bit of what I said because like I do, if one of those edges becomes a stud, yeah. I, I would put my money on Thibodeau. Yeah. He just has the most freakish ability of yeah, any he does. of them. The thing about it is, and we're going to learn this with all these players that have this in uh, NIL stuff. More of these players are going to become very brand conscious. Yeah, and and all of a sudden it's like, well, does he love football? Or does he care about the brand? What does he care about? We're, every every year, because these players, these top players, are going to make millions of dollars, and and so now it's about brand. And you know, are we going to keep questioning? Are we, it, like I say, year, year from now, we are going to have a conversation where it's going to be like, not even like, does he care about football? It's like he cares about his brand and he cares about playing football. You have to talk about both of them. I don't have a problem with that, and yeah. the people that run this team definitely shouldn't have a problem yeah. with that. Yep. Um, the other one I wanted to bring up is like maybe like a Malik Willis. Obviously, not that you're going to draft a quarterback, yeah. but if the right guy falls to you at 24, Man. maybe that makes your life interesting in the sense of somebody trying to come get him. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, if you're interested in going backwards there, that would be uh, something you absolutely have to think about. I think the, the I think the quarterback situation, Carolina at six, and then and I'm probably going to forget somebody, but I, I'm thinking. Uh, I'm thinking that Pittsburgh has done so much due diligence on a quarterback at 20. Likely there's going to be one gone right in front of you there for four picks. All right. Um, I love this question from Andy. I love forward thinking outside the box questions. He says, based on the parameters and the thresholds that we know about, like what the Cowboys like in players, are there any guys that stand out to you that we should be talking more about? And two, I'll just throw these two out there. If you tell, if you think I'm crazy, tell me. Uh, Arnold Abicady, the Penn State edge rusher, mm-hmm. mainly just because he's like the second longest pass rusher in the class, sure, behind Thibodeau. And then another guy that I've heard the Cowboys like is Michael Clemens out of A and M. He's not a big time prospect, but yeah. I just feel like maybe he fits their 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 mold a little bit. Yeah, I kind of feel like that maybe that we. I, I'm always leery to talk about these safeties because it's something that they really don't covet all that much. Sure, but man, you have to give those guys their due. I, I think that we're not. I don't. I think we're not talking about potentially it, it, McDuffie, the Washington corner. Yeah, I think is a guy. He doesn't have the ideal length and all that stuff like that. But man, that is. I mean, we're only. I mean, we we say Gardner, Stingley, but McDuffie at 24. I mean, you know, that's a guy. I mean, if I was picking and I'm thinking, well, okay, well, let's where do you, where do you have him in relation to say some of the some of the other guys on your board, you know? And you know, do you, do you have anybody? And I, I'm you know, I'm looking at I'm looking at McDuffie right now. He's my 15th best player on my board, but behind him I have like Dax Hill, the safety from Michigan, Carl Loftus. From from Purdue, the Kobe Dean, Chris Olave, you know those are the guys that I have behind him, you know. So I'm kind of like you know that I'm in that mode right now where there's some pretty good players behind him, but I don't think we're talking about him for really at 24. McDuffie, yeah, with with him being the 15th best player on my board, you got him at 24. 
I, I think you got to steal right there. I really do. That's an interesting point because the reason I don't think about McDuffie is the length. The length. I mean, you see the type yeah. of DBs Quinn was trying to get last mm-hmm. year. He just doesn't fit that. Yeah. And so it's easy to just kind of write him off. But maybe that's a case where the tape is so good. Yeah. If he's the best guy there, it's like we can live with that. And yeah. Dan Quinn obviously wasn't here, but they did that with Jordan Lewis. Like right. Jordan Lewis does not match what they look for right. at all. Right. They just took the best player on their yeah. board is what they did. Uh, real quick, quickly, Brian. Yeah. Brevity is the soul of wit. Uh, questions from Reed and Mike. Reed wants to know about Danny Gray, the SMU receiver. Mm-hmm. And Mike wants to know about Donovan West, the Arizona State guard yeah. center. Okay. I'm not as high on West, but... But I, I will say this about uh, I will say this about uh, you said Gray right Danny Gray I did that's big time explosiveness I'm again reading off my notes here you know he'll make plays all over the field the screens the drags the vertical balls he's super productive when it comes to finishing plays and I think he brings down the ball in clutch situations I, I think you you know when you watch him play I mean especially in off coverage I mean he can close the cushion faster then those guys can even react. So, I mean, the tracking skills and all that, we're watching the highlights right now. And as you can see, that, you know, tracking the ball, getting the feet down, those are the kinds of things. I mean, there, there, are, there are just multiple ways of getting him the football, and there's multiple ways of him making some super plays for you. Now, West, the center, I, I think there's going to be some other guys that I, I'm at, at center-wise that I'm kind of a little bit more uh, in, in, in love with. I think he was a little banged up during the season, so he missed several games. He's a straight-legged blocker for me, but he kind of holds his man in place. You know, I like his upper body power, the strength. You don't see him getting rocked back or anything, but he plays a little upright, and you know that seems to you know to bother him some. But I kind of like the athlete, the foot athlete, and some like that. Size helps him. You know, he's a three two uh, hundred ninety six pound guy, but uh, you know he usually doesn't appear to be playing very fast. He's not a lazy kid, but there's not a really a lot, a lot of sense of urgency to his game. And so I kind of wonder about that. But uh, I think his ability to move is his best trait for sure. Day three? Yeah, I got him in the – let me make sure I don't want to ever get these things wrong because I'm looking at my board. I should not – you know, Dane just fires these things off the top of his head. And Dane's then, got a photographic memory. Yeah, he's got a, he's got a photograph. I got him in the fourth round today. And Gray, sorry. And Gray is in the fourth round as well. There, there's going to be, like, there's going to be guys worth getting really excited about there yeah. at the top of day three. Yeah, it always is. The, that that round is sure. The round is like what the, we call it the Shoot. the you know. The, How I mean, Jabril Cox was sitting there yeah. on Saturday last year. Yeah, so exactly, we'll see what happens. We appreciate your questions. As always, we will be back with another Tell Me More segment right after this. Tax season is officially over, but Liberty Tax has services to offer you all year round. Aside from tax preparation, they also help with tax debt resolution. If you didn't file your taxes this year or haven't filed in a few years, we've got the solution to your tax problems. Liberty Tax offers guaranteed tax debt resolution services. If you owe back taxes to the IRS, call the professionals at Liberty Tax or visit them at libertytax.com slash radio. That's libertytax.com slash radio. At Smoothie King, we are blending goodness to fuel your greatness. Every blend is crafted to help you achieve your health and fitness goals. Smoothie King uses only whole fruits and organic veggies. You'll never find sugary syrups or artificial flavors, colors, or preservatives. And unlike some other smoothie places, there are zero grams of added sugar in many of our blends. Smoothie King is proud to be the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. Place your order in the app or online for pickup or delivery. Smoothie King, rule the day. What do you call a group of grown men and women with their faces painted silver and blue who get together every week to share a three-hour-long ritual of jumping, sinking, and toasting Miller Lite and 10-gallon hats while yelling, how about them cowboys? You call it Miller Time in Dallas. Here's to the cowboys. Here's to the original light beer. It's Miller Time. Celebrate responsibly. 2021 Miller Brewing Company, Fort Worth, Texas. 
If you have been thinking about weight loss surgery, My Bariatric Solutions has made it easier for you to schedule your initial consultation from the safety, comfort, and convenience of your own home. You'll meet one-on-one with a bariatric surgeon over a private and secure video call. You'll learn everything you need to know about the options available and which procedure is best for you. If you've been considering weight loss surgery and are ready to take the first step, call My Bariatric Solutions today at 844-326-326. 6266. That's 844-326-6266 or go to mybariatricsolutions.com. This This is the DallasCowboys.com Draft Show. Y'all, the 2022 NFL Draft, is it's close enough that you can taste it. It's certainly close enough that you can start planning for it. If you live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, or honestly, even if you just really want to visit, head to the Star in Frisco for the 2022 Cowboys Draft presented by Miller Lite. Starts Thursday, April 28th, goes all the way through the draft. We'll have live draft coverage and entertainment. There will be a free youth camp on Friday night. The Draft Day 5K presented by Baylor Scott and White Health on Saturday morning. It's a smorgasbord of draft-related entertainment. For more details, Visit DallasCowboys.com slash draft. And you and I will be stuck in this room for I was going to say, hours. I would love to come I lo- out. And I love every minute of it. I would love to come out and say hi to yeah. anybody that, that comes up here for the draft. But yeah. we will be uh, well, yeah, we'll say be hello as you're walking studio. in. You know, say hello yeah. from the parking lot. If you, you recognize yeah, us, say hello. Yeah, if you see us out on the Tostitos Plaza, come say hi. Uh, it really is my – it's like my favorite weekend of the year, to be honest with you. Yeah. Like – I used to think that you were an insane person. <laughs> Brian always used to say, you know, if we didn't have to play the games, this job would be pretty great. Yeah. And the more I do it, the more I think the off season is just the best. <laughs> get to talk about draft. Yeah. Get to go hang out in Indianapolis and yeah. eat at St. Elmo's. Yeah. You don't have like the stakes of of just knowing that everyone's going to be miserable if they lose the game or That's what I'm saying. riding too high if they win the game. If, yeah. If you could, if you could just say, okay, we're going to pick our team and do free agency and then put it on paper and determine who's the best team. I would take that as a mythical, you know, the hand me the trophy. Yeah. We were the best. See the Rams within that case would have, well, the Rams adding all their players would have been probably something that we would have been really, really, you know, high on. Yeah. They could have had the trophy last year. They could have had the trophy. Don't, don't get me wrong. The Cowboys are not going to win a trophy for the way that they're doing the off season right now. But but, But the, but the drafting part of it, they've gotten down pretty good. That they have, Yeah. which, Hey, I mentioned Jabril Cox. It's easy to forget. Like, you, you, I think I forgot that Diggs was second. Right, yeah, for pick. real. I think your your interest naturally it's only natural to kind of fall off as you go down the draft. Yeah, but it's so it's easy to forget like the guys that we've gotten really excited about, like the See, Jabril Coxes yeah. and the Xavier Woods. That's the funny thing about it. And when I was when I was working in the the draft room, the last time was two thousand and five, and I, I never wanted to leave the room because I always felt like I was going to miss something. You know, I felt like I was going to miss a trade. I was, and people in the draft room kind of come and go. You know, they just kind of like mosey in. Oh yeah, I love it. You walk in with a sandwich, they, kind of they, munch on it for then, a few minutes, and then they leave. And they, but I always, I just never, ever, ever wanted to leave that room. Not until it was over. I mean, until they said, "Okay, Mister Irrelevant, here it is." I didn't want to leave that room, and and because there's so much the twist and turns, and I wanted to experience everything about it. You know that because I mean, like that today, is that is I mean, your personality do, in a nutshell. I'm going to do a sh- I'm going to do a segment today before I know we got to get some questions and stuff like that. So I'm going to do a segment today on 105.3 The Fan. I got my draft notes from the Tom Brady draft in 2000. Outstanding. And you know, just to kind of I was downsizing my life a little bit, and I was pulling stuff, moving it around. And I went and I found my Tom Brady draft notes and stuff like that. And so I'm going to do a segment about that today and just all the quarterbacks we talked about. And I think forget it's not about like it's not about getting taken advantage of in the trade market yeah. or any of this. Teams don't want you to know all their grades on this stuff. Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. when you have to grade every single player in the draft, yeah. you, you're going to look stupid at least yeah. a few times. You will you look stupid. are absolutely going to. OK, my, my dream in life, I'm willing this into existence we're going to talk about somebody the Cowboys draft on day three in one of these Tell Me More segments. Okay. Let's just get into it. I think we can go a little faster than usual because yep. it's just you and me. Sure. Snoop Connor. Snoop Connor. Running back out of Ole Miss. Yeah, you know, what's interesting about Snoop Connor, I think, is he's really kind of a straight-ahead power runner. He doesn't have much wiggle or the ability to make the first guy miss. 
you know, he, he's the type that just kind of gets you what you can. I mean, he's not going to create much in, in the running game. He's steady. He's productive. He's good in the red zone due to his power. I mean, you could see he, him. With, he's a hoss, man. Yeah, he's, he's a tough guy when it comes at 5'10", 222 pounds. You could see right there just a little slight cut and then, boom, just run through the tackler uh, like that. But that, that time you see right there is accurate. I mean, that's a 4'5'9 guy right there. And again, very steady, very much keep the pads down and run through people. You know, uh, you know he's he's really kind of a backup guy at at, L, at uh, Ole Miss, and I think that's what he's going to be at uh, at uh, in the in the NFL. Kind of a backup guy, that's a home run, not a home run hitter, but a really really good player. Does he? fit your idea of what this team needs behind Zeke and Tony Yeah, Pollard? it's funny because I didn't see him do much pass blocking, but he caught a swing pass against Alabama like when it was behind him and is able to adjust. So at least one of the ideas that you see about him is he can catch the football, you know, and, and made a difficult catch. Right there, you know, you could see, uh, you know, in that game that that hole opened up nice. He was able to get through it, and you know that's what he can do. He can finish, but I especially like him in these like these situations right on the goal line where he could just kind of power through guys. Where do you have him? I have him. You always ask me these questions, and I have to go back to my other board and see where I have Snoop. I have Snoop from the fifth. Uh, I have him behind Haskins, who we did last Michigan, week yeah. from Michigan last week. Yeah, I feel like that it just. This class with the running backs, it kind of seems like there's there's a short list of guys yeah. that you would take on day two. Yeah. And then there's about 15 guys. It's like, yeah, somewhere in the fourth or the fifth. I'll whatever. tell you what. Yeah, I really – my the guy I really like if you want to talk about a running back is James Cook from Georgia. That's the guy. Dalvin's I really, brother. Yeah, that's the guy. I mean, I think he's got some all-around traits to his game. If you have a chance to watch Georgia number 4, uh, James Cook, you watch the Tennessee game. Look at Beamer pulling up some stats. I mean, some Look at him. Highlights. Hey, we see, didn't even tell Chris we were going to talk about Yeah, Cook. this is this is the kinds of stuff. This is what you're going to get coverage-wise cuz Beams on this all the time. But yeah, you know, this is, you know, they hand him the ball. Look at this right here though. They're going to they're going to just take it. He's going to press, make a little slight cut, boom, secondary score against South Carolina. He he does that a lot. I mean, the ball kind of starts sideways, and then all of a sudden he's going forward through that hole. Uh, it's not a coincidence that I wanted to take a look at a couple cornerbacks today, just, all right. just in case. Uh, Tariq Castro-Fields out of Penn State. Tell me more. Yeah, I think with Castro Fields, this is this is a guy that uh, you know when Penn State has got some of these guys where you're you're kind of like, man, is this guy good enough? I mean, he he, he flashes. He, he can line up at either cornerback spot, and I think he's got excellent time speed. I mean, you look at that that four three eight. There's times where you see him really use that, and he can drive on the ball when he really sees it. He's had seasons where he's had more pass breakups than he did in 2021, so that shows me he he can be around the ball. There's some bounce to his game when you watch him move. I mean, he he can come forward. He does a nice job of avoiding blocks. Uh, when he has a chance to make the play, he's got the body control, the foot quickness, the pedal. He can collect. He can go. There's some makeup speed. I mean, yeah, when they when you try and run past this guy, he is going to find a way to run you down, just like he did that poor holder who uh, dropped the snap in that game. So, uh, willing physical downhill uh, player as far as the support goes. I don't know if he consistently trusts his eyes all the time and what he sees, but I'll tell you what, though, the ball skills and stuff like that I think are pretty good. Dan Quinn was in State College this spring. 6'1", 191 with, with uh, Castro Fields. Damn near 31-inch arms, too. Yeah, there right you go. short of that. There so you go. Works for me. A uh, guy that was at the star at some point in the last month talking about Later round center prospects. How about Dawson Deaton, the center out of Texas Tech? Well, I'll tell you what, man. You know, when you gave me this guy to watch, I was kind of like, you know, under my breath, I'm like, come on, Dave. And then I watched, <laughs> him, then I watched him play. And, and I was right. Well, you know, he, I, I haven't watched him. No, he's, he's 6'6", he's 306, he's a tall, thin guy on tape. There doesn't have much form of bulk to his game. But he's super athletic in the way he moves around. He's, he's an excellent position blocker. He, like, he manages to keep his body in the way, keeps himself between the ball and the defender. And he's got a way of a knack for tying up defenders. And, you know, you could watch him in the Oklahoma game. You know, with their inside people that 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 we that we kind of like there, and he gets stalemates. And you know, I mean, he's going to do a good job as a pass protector. I didn't see him get driven back. I mean, for a kind of a guy that lacks a little bulk, 
But those numbers are legit right there. I mean, he is a 309-pound guy, and that and that time you you could tell the athletic ability to to kind of move around the way he does. I I meant he was he was here. Yeah, I, I I passed by him a few weeks ago. He's How do you a, look? Thin. He is a cinder block of a man. Yeah, he is a, a big boy. Yeah. You mentioned the Oklahoma game. Yeah. How do you do against Winfrey? I think he did a pretty good job. That's what I'm saying. Like, he's reaching those wide techniques. I think he's better when he didn't have a guy directly on his nose because he kind of gets, he gets, it's not compressed, but he gets that stalemate. And then he's able to work his feet to where it's like, okay, I know the ball's coming off my right cheek, so I got to turn in order to protect that guy from crossing my face. Right cheek. Yeah. I mean, you're right, but I just love that phrasing of it. Uh, yeah, look, I'll just, I just, I don't pick these names completely arbitrarily. Yeah. We'll just throw that out there. Uh, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. How about Jalen Watson, the corner out of Washington State? Yeah, this is this is an interesting cat because to me, <laughs> I, I don't I really don't know what to think. I think this guy is like super competitive, and I think he plays with a chip on his shoulder. So I kind of like that about him. He played both corner spots for the Cougars there, and he's a long, rangy guy. It's six two, one ninety seven. The majority of his snaps they play is in off coverage, and you'll see him like backpedal then bail. You know, that as a snap, bail, and that's that's that kind of that zone. But he will adjust from there. He's got some strength for the position, and he uses that physicality. Like when he gets up, you watch the Senior Bowl cutups and stuff like that of this kid when he's playing more press. He's up on his guy, and he's long enough, and he and he's able to kind of turn and stay with and get in position to maintain that that integrity of the coverage right there. But I'll tell you what, man, I mean, he is a he he does a great job of finding the football. He he'll, he'll throw himself in there as far as the as run support stuff like that. I will say this though, man. He's got some wild crazy technique tackling. I mean, he really really <laughs> does. And so you might you might make the play and you might not make the play, but he'll come flying forward and try and make the play again. Every bit of 62 and 197 pounds. That sounds He wears number 0 by the way at, at Washington State. So you can watch him uh play. You you're trying to think, okay, is that a misprint? You know, you're thinking you have to oh, look man. it up, but no. It's a new age. He's actually wearing number 0. That sounds vaguely familiar to the scouting report we got on Nashawn Wright. Yeah. It was just like, I mean, it's kind of <laughs> All over kind of the wild place, ass. Yeah. He'll put his head. He'll put yeah. his head in there. He's yeah. not afraid. Yeah. Uh, all right, senior bowl guy. I remember. I remember this guy making some plays in Mobile, mm -hmm. but I don't think we've talked about him a whole lot. Uh, Romeo Dobbs, the wide receiver out of Nevada. Yeah, and this is a guy. And, and this was one of those. This, and you gave me this responsibility. This is one in the morning watching this kid play. Is what this Look at the is. The dedication. Yeah, but I was I was working on a lot of things. I said, oh, I forgot. Is this last night or two nights no, ago? That's tonight. Last night. I, I I was watching him until about one. In the I morning. went to bed a solid two hours before you. I don't know how to. He feel looks about the that. part of tape. I mean, this guy's six two. He's two hundred and one pounds. That all that stuff is legit about him. I mean. His height and length combinations are outstanding. As you can see, he was a quarterback uh, when he came in, and then they moved him to wide receiver. And he's had some games where he's absolutely just lit it up. And this quarterback there is a Strong is his name. and Carson you know, Strong. So, yeah, when you watch Strong, you're like, well, who's he throwing to this number seven? And as you can see, the ball's going down the field. The ball's coming underneath on the screens and stuff like that. There were times where the where Car where Strong just fired it into a spot in traffic, and somehow this guy came down with the football. So, you know this. And he, by the way, this guy's also and I don't know if Beamer might have picked it up, but this guy is a punt returner. Oh, here we go. Here Look at is. Beam. God. Look at Beam being just a stud here right now. Okay, here you go. That, that's what I'm saying. Punt. And this, this guy averaged. This guy averaged like 14 yards a punt return, and which is six in the country for that. So. You can see ball going down the field, going up, and getting it. Punt returner, kind of a, like a, a guy that's got a lot of a uh, lot of uh, good traits to his game. You sound intrigued. I am kind of a fifth round type of guy, maybe a little bit higher than that. But you know, we'll see with uh, with legitimately with what somebody thinks about. It. But the fact that he could do a couple of different things, I think, says a lot about his uh, about his game and his, about his potential. He is, I think, he's dealing with a knee issue that limited yeah. him yeah. during the pre-draft process. But he was he was in Mobile. Yeah. I don't, so I don't know if it happened there, but 
Uh, something to watch, which for those of you, it's so funny because like I listen to podcasts. I don't uh-huh. know about you. I listen in the car, but mm. if you're listening and you're hearing, oh, they're missing, they're missing. Yeah, me and Brian freaking out about the yeah. highlight packages. Yeah. Uh, you can find that on our YouTube channel, on our on the on the DallasCowboys.com app. Um, I mean, Chris Beam does a fantastic job of yeah. putting highlight packages with all these guys. So if you need a visual component and you're listening in your car or while you're walking your dog or whatever. You can find that on YouTube or the app. Uh, Brian, this was fun, man. It was. We're getting close. We're getting. We'll, we so will Thursday, be a week away on yeah, Thursday. A week away on Thursday. And what you what you've got right now is like it says. We finished this thing up. You know the scouts are trying to uh, they're trying to put together that board. They're trying to put together the stack. The Cowboys, like we talked about, are a little bit different than the fact that they get all their medical in, they get all the workouts in, they get all the pro days in. Everything like that is taken care of. So now they have the way of just kind of putting their board together and, and working around Jerry and Steven's schedule. So uh, probably you might start hearing some things about, hey, they like Green better than Johnson and all that. You got to figure out the smoke. You yeah. know, you got to figure out That's, the smoke right I just now. Sort of, I just sort of listen to everything yeah. and try not to jump to conclusions. Yeah. Cause just know that the players we're talking about are the same players they're talking about. True that. Um, Kyle will be back Thursday. I think. Yep. We're going to do a mock draft next week. Just oh. kind of walk you all through what Thursday or the following week. I'm thinking like I'm thinking Tuesday like That'd before, be great. like yeah. draft that week. We always kind of traditionally did that, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. So, we'll have plenty more content coming y'all's way. We appreciate it. Thank you for listening to the draft show presented by Miller Lite. We'll talk to y'all next time. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!